what is going on my cavemen and cave women so so the sba just came out with their official interim rules on the new gross income calculations for ppp loans here's the official document it is 32 pages long don't worry i read through this thing and actually i i was on this so quickly there are no articles on this so i literally had to read through this and like piece by piece figure out what exactly each section each section means so we're going to go through this the most important parts i'm going to explain this in plain english that way you can understand how exactly the gross income works how it works whether you have employees whether you don't have employees and how the new application works for this scenario so we're going to pop right over here to the interim final rule document so the first thing with this the new calculations with gross income only works if you have a 1040 schedule c if that's what you use to file your taxes if you file with anything else as of right now you cannot use gross income calculations for your ppp loan so i highlighted the important parts here in this document so we don't have to go through the entire thing so we can see here gross income the definition of payroll costs applicable to sole proprietors and independent contractors refers to a wage commission income net earnings from self-employment or similar compensation that is in an amount that is not more than one hundred thousand dollars on an annualized basis simple enough previously the ppp rules defined payroll costs for individuals who file an irs form 1040 schedule c as payroll costs if employees exist plus net profits which is net earnings so in the past if you had employees you would have your payroll costs your total gross wages plus net income and that's how they do the calculations that has changed whether you have employees or not it's gross income so it's going to increase everyone who has a 1040 schedule c tax return this will increase your ppp loan amount this is extremely exciting also if you appreciate me reading through this highlighting it making sure i understand this completely give this video a like share it if you find it interesting subscribe you know do all the things i would appreciate it scrolling down a little bit further here okay so uh let me explain what's going on here with all these colors i just broke up the sections with different highlighters that's really it's it's not super complicated so the sba in consultation with the treasury has determined that a schedule c filer may elect to calculate the owner compensation share of its payroll costs that is the share of its payroll costs that represents compensation of the owner based on either net profit or gross income as calculated under the rule below so you're going to still have the choice if you want to use net income you can if you want to use gross income you can you have the choice so if the schedule c filer has no employees the borrower may elect to simply calculate its loan based on either net profit or gross income again pretty simple there and then finally if a schedule c filer has employees the borrower may elect to calculate the owner compensation share of its payroll cost based on either net profit or gross income minus payroll expenses so i'm going to explain this a little bit more uh simply so basically you would if you have employees you file a 1040 schedule c you will take your gross income deduct gross wages from that and that is your your owner's income and then you will add in your payroll expenses the reason it's not just gross income is that way if it was just gross income you'd kind of double dip because you would calculate gross income and then you would add payroll there'd be a double dip there i'm going to go through it kind of showing the math and a little bit later after we we run through this sheet the sheet's not too long so just bear with me here for a second don't know why that number eight is highlighted not important uh, here we go uh, how you calculate your maximum loan amount depends on whether you employ other individuals if you have no employees use the following methodology to calculate your maximum loan amount now instead of reading this i'm going to show you it on the actual application because i think this is a little bit more simple let me zoom in just a tad that's pretty good okay so this might look familiar to you if you've already applied for the ppp or seen other videos of mine the top of this is all what we've seen before your entity types so we can see here the entity type is very limited compared to other applications sole proprietor independent contractor self-employed individual because it has to be a 1040 schedule c tax return for this don't worry if you filed something else you can still get the ppp and again the link to apply for the ppp is in the description of this there's two applications through the same link through the same link i should say there's the five minute fast track application for the the schedule c filers and then there's the regular application 
That's both through the same link. You can check that out if you need a lender. Okay, so DBA or trade name, year of establishment, big business legal name if you have one, your NAICS code. Now, if you use that link below to apply, you're not gonna have to fill this out manually, but it's just good to understand how this works. Some certifications here. Uh, and then for the calculation, if you do not have any employees other than the owners, calculate using this table. So you're gonna take your gross income amount from 2019 or 2020, so whichever one is more beneficial for you. At this point, if you don't have your 2020 tax return done, you might wanna just use your 2019 so you can get this thing done. Because as of right now, this program ends March 31st. Now we might see this extended. Many of you signed a letter that is sent out. I appreciate you who have done that. It's looking pretty good, but we don't know for sure. So me personally, I'd rather get something versus nothing. So you use your line seven gross income from your 1040 schedule C, you divide that by 12. If you take this number and you divide by 12 and it's larger than 8,333, then you just then it's just 8,333. So let's do an example here with a calculator. Let me pull this up real quick. Okay, let's say your line, your line seven on your Schedule C is $50,000. And then you're gonna divide that by 12 and you get 4,166. Then you would enter in 4,166 here. You would enter in that 50,000 here. And then you multiply this by 2.5 10,416, that's how much you can expect to receive from your PPP loan. Now, if this was 150,000, divide that by 12, you can see it's 12,500, that's larger than 833, you would just enter in that 8,333 here. And it would come out to 8 total PPP size, your PPP size, so immature. It would come out to 20,833, which is the maximum amount you can receive if you have no employees. Okay, popping back over to this real quick. So that's the calculation for no employees. This is a ton of words to explain basically what I just said. If you have employees, it's a little bit more complicated. Use the following methodology. And let me explain that again using this borrower form because I just think it's more simple this way. Okay, if you have employees, 2019 or 2020, Schedule C, 1040, line seven. So you're gonna take that line seven amount minus the sum of line 14, line 19, and line 26. Those are the payroll related lines on your Schedule C. So you're gonna enter that in there. Line seven minus those three. Um, let's just do an example here. Let's say that comes out to, let's say your gross income again is 50,000. And then we subtract these three and we'll say those three, it comes out to 30,000. Okay, so we have 20,000 left. You're gonna put in 20,000 there. You divide that by 12. You get 1,666. You put that in there. Now you add in your average monthly payroll for employees. So this is your gross wages. That includes everything from retirement, your wages, tips, gross wages, everything. You're gonna take that and you're gonna, let's say your gro gross wages were 30,000. Then you'll divide that by 12, 2,500. So we're gonna put 2,500 there. And we're gonna add that B and C. So I believe that was 1,666. Uh, and that, was, that comes out to 4,166 for B and C combined. Then you multiply that by 2.5. And there you go, 10,415. That's how much you could expect to receive. And then we can see the purpose of the loan, check all that apply. Nothing has changed there. That is the exact same. Now popping back over to this guidance sheet real quick, just to finish up. There's a few more things I wanted to highlight here. The proceeds of the PPP loan are used for the following. And like I said, nothing here has changed. So if you're familiar at all with the PPP loan, nothing's changed, employee payroll costs, mortgage interest payments, interest payments on other debt obligations, refinancing your SBA EIDL loan if you so please, covered operation expenditures, covered property damages. This is property damages due to like looting and rioting in the last year. Most people won't have any expenses there. Covered supplier costs, which is a pretty, pretty broad definition. Now. 
If you are using this gross income calculations, chances are you can just use payroll. You'll have it 100% forgiven. And I've seen a lot of questions on forgiveness. I think people are overly worried about forgiveness, to be honest, because it's just getting easier and easier. First off, you have 10 months after you receive funding to apply for forgiveness, so there's no rush. And you will receive emails from whoever your lender is to apply for forgiveness. If you use the fast lane program that's linked in the description, forgiveness is as easy as can be because it connects to your bank account, pulls your statement, applies for forgiveness for you. All you have to do is one click DocuSign. It couldn't be easier. Now there's just a little bit here that I wanted to cover to finish off. Let's see, scroll, scroll, scroll. I know I read this entire thing. Scroll, 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 scroll. There was one more thing I wanted to point out. Okay. The last day to apply and receive a PPP loan is March 31st, 2021. Now, normally when, it, when a rule like this becomes into effect, there's a delay between you know receiving a sheet like this and when it actually starts. All this is saying is it's going to start right now. But this is a little bit annoying to me because they acknowledge that the program has a short duration and there's an urgent need to issue loans quickly, but they don't extend the duration. What's going on here? So I think... Th I think the odds are that we're gonna see this extended, but as of right now, we don't know. So personally, I say apply as soon as humanly possible. And that's my recommendation. So again, there's a lender in the, in the description if you need one, otherwise you can use any SBA lender. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.